Hi, today we're going to be painting a Questorus Knight for use in Legions Imperialis. Now Knights, they fill a really interesting role in Legions Imperialis. They're not as large or as expensive as a Titan, but they still tower over most units. They have plenty of wounds, and that combined with their Ion Shield make them quite a hard target to crack. As a strategic asset, they can only constitute up to 30% of your total force. Though I do have to admit, it'll be pretty fun to see how many you could field in the uh, Titanfall scenario, which will be in an, available in an upcoming supplement for Legions Imperialis. Now, if you hang around to the end of the video, you'll get to see me try some freehand heraldry on this knight, which as you can guess is quite a challenge to do at this scale. Now, the easiest way to start a knight either in the Legion's Imperialis scale or on a normal scale, is going to be with a metal base coat. In this case, we're using Vallejo's uh, gun metal through my airbrush. We're going to add some detail to the metallic areas by finding some details that we'd like to color with different metallic colors. For this, I'm using Spartan Bronze, which is a metal color from Two Thin Coats. I'm going to go and give the entire miniature a coat of a black wash, in this case using Oblivion Black Wash from Two Thin Coats. And we're going to be quite generous with this black wash all over the miniature, making sure that we're covering all of the areas and getting that real nice grimy look. And then we'll give this wash a little while to dry. And now to start the armour. Now this night that we're going to be painting today, we will be painting as the Knight House Lucaris, which was a traitor Knight House. We'll be making use of three main colors for our armor panels. The first of these in the main color is going to be a dark blue-green color. For this, we're going to be using a one-to-one -one mix of Jade Green and Abyss Blue. The secondary color for this Knight will be a dark gray. And for this, we're going to be using a mix of one-to-one -one of Dungeon Stone Grey and Death Reaper. And finally, we're going to be making use of a cream colour on both the shoulder panel and also on the uh, banner. And for this, we're going to be using Vampire Fang. Now, the important bit when painting the pauldrons is that they are divided into halves. And so we'll be using a different colour in the two halves on either side. And later on when we get to doing some freehand, we'll also be doing different freehand in both the front and the back of each of the pauldrons. After giving each of the armor panels their base coat, we'll then move on to painting the trim. For House Lucarus, the trim is painted a bright gold color. For this, we're going to make use of Dragon's Gold, which is well and by far my favorite gold color. Now, I thinned this down using a little bit of water, but you might notice when I start painting that I get a little bit too much water and it starts to flow too much. I find when using trim, finding the right amount of water balance is very important, as it means that the uh, gold will cling very well to the trim of the miniature without overflowing and bleeding into the panels that you've spent so long painting. The next step 
is giving all of the blue panels that we painted previously a quick wash using Tempest Blue Wash just to help to really reinforce the panel lines between each of the panels. Moving back onto the trim, we're going to give it a quick wash using Agrax Earthshade from Citadel. And this just really helps to create a really rich golden color. Now, quick note, the reason that I'm not using the Two Thin Coats Brown Wash, which is a very, very good wash, just like Agrax Earthshade, is that I actually couldn't get the bottle open. I've found for the most part that the Two Thin Coats bottles are quite good, despite having a bit of a tendency to leak. Though that said, the wash lids particularly tend to get quite difficult to open at times. I suspect because they're leaking like the other bottles do. After this, we can then go and do a quick edge highlight. And so we'll do a quick edge highlight on all of the blue panels and also the other colors of panel as well. For our edge highlight for the blue panels, we're gonna be making use of a ghoul green and witching our blue mix one to one. For the gray panels, we'll just use the dungeon stone gray directly. And now for the fun part, watching me completely fail at freehand. Well, not completely fail, but, but freehand is something that I don't do a lot of, and this is a pretty good opportunity to practice it. I mean, where better to practice freehand than epic scale knights? For House Lucarus, most of the heraldry that you'll see on the knights is a deep red color. For this, we're gonna be using Sanguine Scarlet, also from Tooth and Coats. Now, I start off by painting a uh, spiky wheel on one of the pauldrons, and then I move on to painting a checkerboard pattern. Now, this is actually my first time trying a checkerboard pattern, so it's quite an interesting process. I started out by drawing a, uh, a grid and coloring in the uh, tiles to make the checkerboard pattern. One of the things that was quite interesting though is that if you just go with this pattern, you can end up with the red or the, the, the bits that you're coloring in being slightly larger than the gaps. And that's obviously because you've got the grid lines also making up the uh, checkerboard pattern. So after this, I do go back and do a uh, make the black slightly larger just to fill it out and make it look a little bit more even. And then on the front, I will I try my best to do a serpent given that House Lucaris is known as the House of Serpents. And you'll see that if you uh, look up their heraldry, it is a red fanged serpent. I then also paint a uh, skull onto the other pauldron and then just follow up with another couple of smaller bits of uh, freehand really just taking inspiration from some of the uh, links that I found on the internet and there we have it that is my house Lucaris Questorus knight I actually haven't had a chance to use a knight yet in Legion's Imperials if you've had a chance to use one how did it actually go in the battle did I just waste my time painting one I'd love to know. Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching.